Our main aim of bringing women together in this community is that it's not because of only political issues we are talking about. We are talking about the ills in the family, the ills that we go through as women, at the same time political issues, because now we know that it's a political time. We are told as women, your voices have to be heard and not to be seen. And that kind of a myth is with us as women from this region. We are only known to vote, but not to be voted for. And when women and communities only vote men, it means we are giving our rights to those men. We are not blaming anybody here. We have neighbors, we, we have friends. We want to be part of the uh, dispersion which is going on, the political dispersion. In this country, there are many political parties. We need to look at those political parties and know what are their policies and what are their agendas. From there, then we can go forward and join the other Kenyans. We are also looking at uh, at cohesiveness, how can we unite as women? We start with this community, the next community will have theirs and it will be like a triple effect so that women know their rights. There are many things that women, especially the Muslim women, uh, always feel it is men who represent them. And also men in the parliament on higher places always think women are only to stay in the house. But our mothers educated girls here. We are doing this for our future and present, and that's why we are here this morning. For us, uh, the purpose of today's meeting, as been explained by Ambassador Subo, is just to bring unity among the family members. Uh, not only the ladies, plus even the uh, bigger family members. And uh, the other issue is, uh, as women who are in political spheres, we are aware of the fact that uh, the, the time for women is almost running out. We have done 20, we are supposed to affirmative action for 20, we were given 20 years, 10 years already gone, just like that. And uh, we are uh, also um, uh, going now to the next, the first five of the next 10 years. After that, there'll be no affirmative action. So for me, part of my aim today here is to ensure, to ask my sisters here, who, any lady who is contesting with a man, please make sure we elect them. But as we elect them, let us also, if there are two or three, let us, you know, make sure that uh, is somebody who can, you know, sometimes we need ambassadors. If you're in a place and uh, that person that you elected is a good ambassador, then people will start uh, appreciating uh, uh, women leadership. Uh, the other thing that I mentioned as I was speaking earlier was if there was a lady in leadership as a governor of Wajia County, let's say for the last 10 years, today, we will be talking about different Wajia County, not the status it is. Because, you know, as you're aware, uh, division of revenue in terms of, uh, you know, uh, whatever is allocated to counties, it will be there for some time. But ultimately, counties are supposed to have their own resources to, to, to generate their own resources. Government is just giving them a jump start right now. So whoever we, we elect as a leader, we need somebody who can generate work. We don't want handouts as women. We want somebody who can create the jobs for all these beautiful women who are very much educated. Women have not been in politics. They have just been voters for far too long. And that's where they forgot themselves. When we are in public brasses, you'll see women clapping for men. I mean, what are they clapping for? And adulation. They are not being elected. I want to send a message to my, my women folks who are here. Please, never clap for men. Clap for a woman who is a contestant. Because it will make a difference.